Live from Houston, Texas, this is Big Ideas, Small Business, with your host, Laura Kamrath and Brian Gendron. And now, the music of Max Flynn. I'm starting to feel a little crazy again. I think it's time I start to pack my things. All right, welcome yes. to Big Ideas, Small Business. Laura, how are you today? I'm doing pretty awesome. I'm, I'm a little tired because I got up for early morning networking, as, as I saw you did. That's um, right. This morning with the Chamber of Commerce. You looked a little out of it, but you seem a little bit rejuvenated. So. Yeah, I was, I've actually been working really hard on launching a brand new website that's uh, um, focusing some services specifically for oil and gas. And um, so I've been uh, burning the candle, getting that done, and, and uh, got up this morning and I was like, oh. <laughs> well, but, I'm uh, glad, glad you made it. And yeah. we are here with a very special guest. Miss Brittany Abair, how are you? Hi, I'm doing fantastic. What about you? Oh, doing great. So, first of all, I love your energy, Laura. If you don't need a cup of coffee, I know you had. A oh, lot of well, this is why I'm trying to sit as close as I can to Brittany. <laughs> She's like, here. what can you pass <laughs> off on me? I know I'm sitting here nervous, you know, and like quiet. And Brian's like, are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. So, so Brittany and I have got to know each other over the last few months. Uh, honestly, I've been so inspired by what she does with her nonprofit, Sky High, and that's really just been your side hustle. I, I gave her a new term today. She hadn't heard philanthropeneur. She's <laughs> absolutely a philanthropeneur. We're going to hear about that today. So here's how this works, Brittany. Uh, when we have guests, we like to learn a little bit about their story, and then we take a big idea that you had and dive into that a little bit. So you game? I'm game. Let's do this. All right. So let's start with your story. And I I love this story. Let's have the short version. <laughs> yeah, I know, because I can uh, tell that story for probably two days. So um, now I grew up on a small farm in South Louisiana hunting, fishing, and enjoying every bit of the outdoors with my family. Um, and, you know, really showed lambs in 4-H for a long time while juggling basketball, beta club, and, you know, student body uh, president, etc. So involved in lots of things growing up, and I thank my parents for that. Um, but when I turned 14 years old, my lamb unfortunately passed away and mom said guess what we are trying something new you're going to get out of your rubber boots and you're going to put the shotgun away and you're going to join and participate in the cattle festival pageant and i literally was like what uh mom not happening so long story short put on a dress and heels received a little coaching from a local um amazing girl named regina van Ord. i'll never forget that and actually won the pageant. Can you believe it? What? I can't. <laughs> I can't still today, but uh, apparently my interview did it all. But long story short, the pageant circuit is what led me to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital at a very young age. And um, the group Beanies for St. Jude out of Kaplan, Louisiana, led by Billy Menard, uh, truly changed my life forever. Um, visited St. Jude as a volunteer, interacted with children that um were unfortunately fighting for their lives and you know growing up if you are not exposed or experience that in your family or with a friend you don't understand that there are children your age dying and that's the reality so i felt like god had showed me my vocation right then and, then and there continued to participate in pageants and um uh really for the only reason to volunteer for saint jude so that's the that's the beginning of it. How far are we going? We're going all the way to college. We're going to college. Well, <laughs> we we can, and that's actually one of my favorite parts of the story. So, I, I think so. V. Let, let's yeah. talk about. Okay, and then you know, again, everyone has um, obstacles in life. People, you know, go through different um, you know challenges, and so my father was in a helicopter crash, which you know was a, was detrimental to the family because. He quit school in high school, and so he had no education, and my mom also didn't go to college, so she was raising the kids. So we had to pick up all the loose ends on the farm at a very young age. I remember mowing grass, like 10 acres of land at 8 years old, I think, no problem. 
Um, and so the helicopter crash happened. My dad survived, thankfully, um, but lost his career, so we struggled. And then um, later on, my parents, unfortunately, were divorced, and that was an open divorce. Um, dad spiraled into depression. My brother actually um, went through a really hard time just getting through school, um, you know, several expulsions, etc. And then my mom actually uh, turned to drugs and alcohol. So my senior year of high school, my mother was in a rehab facility um, at Palmetto in, in Monroe, Louisiana. And I remember on Sundays having to go visit her there. Um, and there was just a lot of juggling going on. We lived with our grandparents for a little while, lived with my dad. And then, honestly, my senior year of high school, I moved to Lafayette, Louisiana, to live with um, my best friend, Crystal uh, Mafus, who was managing a restaurant called Edie's, which my grandpa introduced me to, and I ended up working there. And I started working there as the cashier in high school, so I would earn money on the weekends and during the summer to actually buy groceries buy groceries a lot of times at home. So, um, so I had a lot going on or a lot of challenges uh, to face. Um, and then in addition, our house burnt down. Oh my it's God. just like, yeah, it was like one of those things worse where, worse. yeah, and I remember <laughs> looking to the sky at one point, like asking God, like, is this, is this it? Like, is this anymore? You got anything else coming my way? You know, and, and, um, and so, yeah, so went through a lot, but ended up going to Lafayette, put myself through college, worked at Edie's Restaurant, um, as a waitress, and uh, paid every single dollar of the University of Louisiana at Lafayette's bill. Uh, proud to say I have no student debt and didn't have any, so I'm a big um, advocate for student workers and for uh, kids who do have to pay their own way. Um, and, and, and honestly, the advice out there is to be smart about it. Don't attend a college out of state and don't attend a college that you can't afford. Because in my opinion, honestly, you get the same education. I'm sorry for any of those uh, I believers out there. I think you get the same education because it's what you put into it, right? I sat in the front row of class because I was a nerd because um, I wanted to learn. So anyway, we could go on and on. But. So there's a lot in there. We can unpack some of it, but certainly a non-traditional upbringing and a lot of what you learn from those experiences I see day in and day out as to what you do with St. Jude's or what you do with your job in oil and gas you have this work ethic that's been ingrained from a young age and so you put that to work and the story of Edie's was is kind of where this the genesis of what ultimately became Sky High, right? Yeah, I, you know, visiting again St. Jude at 14 with Beanies, the little group out of Kaplan, um, working at Edie's and, and really being part of a, such a phenomenal community in Lafayette, Louisiana um, is what led me there. So, so you combine all those things and it's literally my senior year of college. Billy Menor finds me at the restaurant and says, we've got a project for all the past queens, and we have a challenge for you. We, we are asking everyone to join together and raise $10,000 for us to get back to St. Jude. That sounds like a lot of money. It's a, it was a lot. That age, right? Oh, yeah, 20 years old, wow. and you you have no fundraising experience, or don't even, I don't even know what the word nonprofit meant in right. college. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you think, yeah, that is a lot of money. Um, so I'm definitely not doing a bake sale, and <laughs> lemonade stand's probably not going to work out, nor is a car wash. Uh, so I remember at that point thinking about what I love to do, and that was at the time shooting sporting plays. Isn't that great? So her mom made her put down the shotgun and get into these pageants and here we are full circle picking that shotgun back up yes sir yes sir so um the big idea that's that's what had happened okay so i'm thinking sporting clays on fridays a lot of guys in the oil and gas industry gather together to shoot you know in a tournament and so i'm thinking okay four people on a team if we need to raise ten thousand dollars we charge $500 a team, you need X amount of teams, and then we need X amount of sponsorships, et cetera. So I literally sat on the steps of the library at school and put together a mock budget, and then the next thing was calling the local gun club, mm -hmm. finding out what all the fees entailed and what we needed to do, what what people did at their other sporting events, and um, literally just started putting it all together, right so, in there. I don't know the answer to this, had you been to a sporting clay event before? I would think so, right? I had not attended an actual tournament. Mm -hmm. I shot 
growing up with my dad in the backyard. And by no means did we have any fancy machines or fancy guns. I actually started with a crack barrel 410, which my dad cut half the stock off because it was too long, and a hand thrower. So people think, oh, she was this rich pageant queen that shot sporting clays with a fancy Caesar Guarini. And I'm like, uh, no, let me, let's get that straight. So hand thrower. But my dad started putting this in skeet, true skeet competitions at the Gaydon Duck Festival. That's, oh, wow. that's what happened. And honestly, you know, I had an eye for it. I was just kind of a natural. And that was because of the duck hunting and dove hunting that we did growing up, right? Um, so, uh, yeah, picked up the shotgun and started, you know, shooting in that, in that world, but never in a tournament. So I didn't understand how one even operated. So if, if you were in Houston, you'd be like, oh, yeah, of course, a sporting clay tournament. But because of where you brought up and where you came from, it was like, it almost probably felt like you were like, inventing it at the time. <laughs> yeah, I was like, does this even happen? Do people gather on four-man teams and whatnot? And, that, and, that's, and that's, you know, that's what happened. I went out to the community and found people, really, that I served at the restaurant um, to help me, right? Went to ask for help to see what worked for them, what didn't work for them, and honestly, started asking them to also donate money. Let me tell you why that's important. I mean, and we'll get to it eventually of what these events have become, but it allowed you to create your own flavor of event because you literally created it. You understand what I'm saying? As opposed to just saying, I'm going to take a sporting clay and make it my own. You literally created it, which is, which I think is really why you are where you are today. So. Well, thank you, yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. So, that, so let's talk about that first tournament. Yeah, so the first tournament was it was phenomenal. So again, you, you know, you started with um, a, a mock budget and then went to the community to ask for help. A lot of people that, again, ate at Edie's restaurants. And um, I remember sitting on the couch and thinking about the name, right? So at first it was going to be Beanie's for St. Jude because I was going to piggyback off of what they had already created. But um, the organization didn't have a tax ID number. They were not a formal 501c3 nonprofit. And I did a little bit of research and found out that, hey, people can't just write you checks and then you start writing checks, right? I mean, that's not the right thing to do. So I actually went to Chase Bank with a sticky $100 bill because we served biscuits at this restaurant, the best biscuits you'll ever eat, by the way. Well, we must have served a lot of cinnamon biscuits that day, but $100 bill and opened Sky High for St. Jude that day because I sat on my couch and thought, what am I going to name this thing? Well, do you remember when I said uh, I looked to the sky at one point in my life and just kind of asked God, like, what else and, 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 you know, help me get through these things? That was always my um, safe place, to look up in the sky, know that he's there, know that he's going to always be there and always keep my faith. And so I literally also thought, well, you point the gun towards the sky and the sporting clays fly in the air. And so, hey, this is perfect. Sky high. Oh, and it rhymes. Sky high. Sky high for St. Jude. Because at the time, we were only going to benefit St. Jude. It was supposed to be a one-time tournament, right? So Sky High for St. Jude was formally opened at Chase Bank that day in Lafayette. And, uh, and the next thing was creating a flyer, which I um, actually... Uh, borrowed, I'm going to say borrowed, a logo <laughs> that someone else had probably created off of the internet, which was an Elmer <laughs> Fudd guy <laughs> shooting the sporting clay. It was hilarious. And, and literally created a, uh, a flyer, which we still have today. It's hilarious to look at. Um, but we created a flyer, and we had the date set, and we had the tournament ready to go. And so we're about four weeks into this. And I say we, me and the people I'm asking for help. And that's when it dawned on me that we needed a website, we needed to go out and get raffle prizes, but most of all, I needed to create a very dominant team to help me do this. Because the reality is, I love this, this is Devin Steele's quote, one person cannot cure cancer, it takes a team. So I turned to all of the amazing women that worked with me at Edie's restaurant and said, girls, I need your help. We want to raise money for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. And Crystal, Holly, Jill, Michelle, I mean, Patty, everyone said, we're in. What do we need to do? And there you go. And that's how it started, right? So, so three months we had to pull this tournament off. I remember the night before the events, we had 350 participants registered. We had $36,000 in the bank. So we were like, uh, okay, well, we've already reached our goal. This is pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. 
We had managed to receive a fully donated sport and clay cart, like one of those cool jacked up, you know, golf carts. Um, and the community just really opened their hearts and poured in. We had a billboard with my face on it shooting a shotgun <laughs> on Highway 90 for crying out loud. And so I remember the next morning, my grandpa's Cajun band opened up the event. We had, you know, beverage donors, food. I mean, it was just an amazing day. And we had over 350 people come out and support um, St. Jude and what they do to help cure kids with cancer. And we raised $50,000. Six girls in college wow. threw this thing together and raised fifty grand, and just kind of like all surprised ourselves. I think uh, it's incredible, and to think too that you were working full time to pay for school, probably sending money back home to help with the family too. If, I'm, if I know you, any yes, and, correct, and. Mm -hmm putting on this this huge community event in Lafayette, which ain't a small city, and I got to see a picture of this billboard sometime. I know you have a picture of it. <laughs> we have it. It's hilarious. <laughs> we but do have it. It's just an incredible start to this, and, and it's, it's amazing that you're able to do it on your own without, I guess, any formal mentorship uh, that, that, that I could tell. I mean, you just created it. And it... Eventually, this led you to Houston. So maybe tell us a little bit how you got here, and get us to where you are today. Yeah, so I'm getting ready to take the LSAT at the same time because in my mind, all I knew was I wanted to move to New York City, drive a black Mercedes, and go into our courtroom and kick butt. Why? Because that's what I saw on TV growing up. I was in practice, for crying out loud. So I thought, oh, yeah, this is perfect for me. I'm going to be a bad-to-the-bone attorney. Well... Sky High came into the mix, right? And actually, God's calling came into the mix, and my purpose came into the mix. And so, um, long story short, several participants that were at the sporting play tournament were in the oil and gas industry. In fact, 99% of our donor base is oil and gas, which we are extremely thankful for. Um, offered me jobs. They said, Brittany, we loved what we yeah. saw on the microphone. We know you coordinated and put this whole thing together, and you raised 50 grand. We don't know how you did it at 20 years old, but we want you to work for us. I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> so I drove to Houston, Texas. In fact, when I was in, um, you know, the part of the event phase where we were soliciting sponsors with uh, Steve Miller, in fact, um, a great friend, and I went into Pegasus International to sell a sponsorship. And so in addition to that, you know, again, I received a lot of opportunities to, to, to uh, work at different locations. And I remember thinking, oil and gas. Mm. Uh, my dad got on a helicopter and went offshore seven and seven and then crashed and had no career. And you know what's so crazy? I know this sounds insane. I grew up sheltered in the education sense, right? No one in my family went to college. Everyone worked manual labor, which is fine. It's amazing. I'm not knocking it at all. But I did not know four years into school that engineering was a degree. Okay. <laughs> Like, what is mechanical engineering? I don't know. And that equals oil and gas most of the time. So, all I had in my head was this helicopter going to a platform in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. No way, not for me. Going to law school. And I want to get rich, right? So, anyway, um, I ended up interviewing, uh, listening to Crystal and several people in my life, including my dad, and interviewing with Pegasus International. And let me just say, God said, Take the job, don't look back, move to Houston now, and continue with Sky High. And that was the big aha moment, okay? I was in Florida with all the girls, and, um, you know, I said, I don't know what to do. And the offer that I received at that age and that time was quite substantial. Um, you know, my best friend was like, you won't make that coming out of law school for the first five years, you know? I mean, it was just great money. And at the end of the day, it honestly was God's way of saying, hold on, I've got a bigger plan for you, so you need to do this. So I did. I packed my U-Haul. I borrowed $400 from Michelle Hebert. She, she asked me to pay it forward one day in the future, which I did. Borrowed $400 and literally drove across I-10, knowing no one in this city, and I actually got an apartment in walking distance from Pegasus International because I was so darn nervous to drive in this big city. It was hilarious. I was like, what? I can't drive in this city. So, yeah, so that's how I got to Houston. And in the same time frame, 
the girls said it's time to formally open a 501c3 nonprofit, Brittany. And so Crystal called the CPA and the lawyer. Before you know it, on my birthday, October 5th, we're signing the Articles of Incorporation. And boom, Sky High was officially born. October 5th, 2007. Seven. Yeah. So 11 years ago. 11 years ago. Wow. So, so Houston has changed, and, and really just having years behind you, you've learned a ton, I'm sure. A ton. Are you afraid to share a mistake or two along the way? No, I actually wrote down several, and I looked at Christina <laughs> at the office earlier, and I'm like, gosh, I could write like a book on the mistakes <laughs> that we made and the lessons that we learned, right? So picture, you know, a 20-year-old who had zero nonprofit experience, um, had no idea what the legalities were and what really all of this was going to mean one day. So I just, I took a few notes. So first of all, the lawyer and the CPA. You want to hire an attorney to file your paperwork. And the reason is because you really get kind of one shot at getting approved federally. And so it's important to do it right the first time. And that's what we did. We decided where our money was going, what types of facilities, et cetera. Of course, all medical related. Um, and, and we paid our $900 fee and we had Paul Grove issue the paperwork. We also got the CPA on board and started that process. But we hired two um, uh, phenomenal people, but we hired two people that were not savvy in nonprofit. Okay, so that's my first one. Hire a lawyer and hire a CPA that understand nonprofits and that are experts in the nonprofit industry, right? Because there's a lot of ways to code things, to do your 990, et cetera, that um, is really for the nonprofit world versus the for profit world. My second one is QuickBooks. Guess what? You think any of us college girls were like recording everything in QuickBooks for the first couple of years? Mm -hmm. Wrong. So now we're going back and we're looking for some records and we're having to pull from Chase Bank because we didn't have QuickBooks. So that's super important. Record keeping is key. You want to record everything. And with technology these days, you can put it all on a hard drive. Nonprofit laws. You should probably understand that you can't give a $15,000 cash prize away in a raffle. Yeah, guess what? That's illegal in the state of Texas, and we learned that lesson as well. Um, what was the prize, but out of curiosity? Or did you did you actually do it? No, we did it. What like, we, $15,000. Oh, cash. straight cash. Just straight cash. Like, hey. Um, and, and by the way, the cash was donated from a donor. So a guy brought us a bag of cash. We put it in a safe, and then someone won, and we gave him a bag of cash. Right? So... It was crazy, but um, and we thought it was amazing, but then we found out, oh, well, guess what? That's that's kind of illegal, right? Oh, we, did, yeah. we did not get in trouble, right? You get a few hall passes, but we learned that lesson. So it's important to be up and up on your nonprofit uh, yeah. rules, regulations, and laws. And I'll tell you right now, there's a lot of nonprofits that don't follow some of the basic things. And I'm not saying that some nonprofit cops going to show up at your event. <laughs> but you know what? The amount of money that we're raising now and the, and the people that we are asking to donate to us, it's important we're following the rules, the laws, the regulations. And that's just something as a, at a young age with no experience, you just don't know. And I think more and more they do their due diligence these days, you know what I mean? And there's so many causes out there and they don't want their name attached to one that funnels to terrorism or something mm. crazy like that. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, I mean, you have to have a gaming license in each state. You should be registered to receive funds from each state. We just went through the process with Labyrinth to be registered in all 50 states. You know what? Let's just play it safe. And in addition, you can't host an event and just give away alcohol. You have to hire TABC licensed bartenders to actually come and serve that free Miller Lite. <laughs> and there's a lot of events that you go to and you just stop and pull one out of the ice chest. It is a big rule at Sky High that we want things to be safe. We want things to be done by the book. And, you know, again, those were mistakes we made in the past. Again, no one ever got in trouble or, you know, you know, it was always done safely. But yeah, now we safe. know, and, and, I mean, we do it right. We hire bartenders. Um, your board of directors. I'm sorry, here's the bottom line. You better pick people that believe in your mission and in your vision first. You have to have a board that believes in the leadership, right? And honestly, wants to help and coach that leader. I have, I have transformed from a 20-year-old, you know, salt and vinegar, you know, a sassy kid trying to boss people around to a much better leader, 
per my mentors, that's what they tell me anyway. Um, but, you know, I have people on our board that truly believe in my vision, and that's important. And the mission always has to be first. It always has to be number one. The why, the why, the why. Um, board training. We did LaSalle University's board training uh, two years ago now, and that was an eye-opener. We left a full day of training with 18 months worth of action items because you just, I mean, the bottom line is a board should treat their position as a full-time job. Um, and then lastly, create your strategic plan because if you don't have a strategic plan, you can get, you can just be scatterbrained and you can be chasing every $5 bill out there and honestly you have to stay focused and you have to, um, you know, host events and do things that are within your organization's mission and, and, and again, stay focused. And I think that goes for everything, not just nonprofits, but your business and your podcast, whatever, whatever it is, have a strategic plan. So that's a lot you learned. And I like to start with the mistakes and challenges you had because it would be easy for people to just see how well y'all are doing today exactly. and just think you just got there. And clearly that's not the case. Not the case. There were many nights where I laid down crying. Brian, because I thought, I, I can't, like, I don't think I can do this anymore. This is hard. You are dealing with a thousand personalities, whether that's your donors, your volunteers. And guess what? For seven years, Sky High, Sky High had no office and zero staff. Seven years, raising upwards of a million dollars a year with no staff. Right? So, I mean, hello. Lesson learned, hire a staff <laughs> member out the gates, right? Thank you, Jesse Deirdre, for quitting your job in oil and gas and joining our team. You know what I mean? So there was just a lot of things that we went through, a lot. And I, I'm sure it would have been a lot easier with some of those mentors that you know to get now that you just don't know when you're 20 years old. You don't know that, hey, there's people that have done this before. I don't have to create all this stuff on my own. I don't have to learn all this on my own. Right. But such is life. I mean, that's just how it goes. Right. And you're stronger because of it. Yeah. And I had amazing mentors, but a lot of them were in the oil and gas industry. So they right. worked in a for-profit company their whole lives, right? That's right. Good point. So that kind of brings us to where we are today. Let's, let's talk about... Uh, the, the shooting, the shooting clay, that, or the clay tournament that you have back in Lafayette that raised fifty thousand dollars. Let's take, for example, the event you had in Houston, or pick one. But yeah. Let's talk about what they've become. So they've become a uh, truly a fun, fulfilled weekend event that, of course, again focuses on the mission and brings our community together to provide comfort, fun, research, and save lives. And we're raising upwards of one million dollars in 48 hours now wow. so it is insane to think that honestly this year uh, 2018 will probably uh, bring in a total of 5.5 million dollars it's incredible crazy it really is and there's a few things about these events that I find really interesting and by the way I haven't been to one yet short to you here in the fall mm, he's going don't you worry <laughs> yeah but one of the things that people tell me about is your auctions so Brittany actually is an auctioneer and a brilliant <laughs> auctioneer at that uh, her she runs out into the crowd and I'm really excited to see you in action mm -hmm. so uh, that that's one and it just it's a testament to you overall how hands-on you are with uh, not just these events because it's easy for people that are on the board, that are executive directors, CEOs, and founders to live up on the you know the ivory tower. Not the case. You are so hands on. I, I follow her on Instagram, and if you don't, what's your Instagram handle? Make sure. Brittany M. A. Bear. Make sure you follow her. Follow her story because she is you know at St. Jude's with the kids, at Ronald McDonald House with the family. So hands on with the actual cause and where these funds are going it is. Uh, it's remarkable. So you're involved at every level. Every level, whether it's um, you know loading trailers for inventory purposes, uh, picking up bags of ice, running to um, Hobby Lobby to grab the last bit of the crafts for the kids to paint at our carnival. No job is too big for any of our staff members, and honestly, any of our board members or volunteers. If you're too good to put ice in an ice chest to get the you know Coca Cola nice and crispy for the participant, 
well, then this is probably not the organization for you to volunteer in, right? So that's what's been so remarkable. We are hands-on. We do whatever it takes to get the job done. And you know why? Because 20% of children are dying. Period. End of story. 20% out of the 15,000 that get diagnosed in the U.S. every year. So do you want to be the parents of that one in eight child that didn't make it? No. So guess what? That's the reality. I mean, we, we let it out there. We, we make sure the community understands. And that's what's unique about our events as well. You will touch, feel, and see children from Texas Children's Cancer Center, from St. Jude, from Ronald McDonald House. We fly patients in from all over the country. We pay for transportation, hotel, whatever we need to do to allow our donors to see exactly where their money is going is key, right? And it's giving this child and family a chance to get away from treatment for a weekend. They love coming to the sporting play tournaments or the banquets or the ladies who brunch event where you had Dylan who just you know, had, a, had her right leg amputated, okay? She's 14 years old, and she loved getting dressed up and being the center of attention at our ladies, um, you know, brunch event. So we give that touch and feel. You, you drive down our driveway, and there's pictures of kids everywhere on massive signs. You know, every shooter wears a tag on the back of their shirt, and they're shooting for a certain patient and their diagnosis that day of the event. How many charity events do you go to? And sometimes you don't even know what what the cause is. Sky High puts the children first every time, and that's what sets us apart. And it's incredible attention to detail that, that you all have, and a, the culture that even for-profit companies can learn about. When your leader is that hands-on and, and you know right next to the cause, it sets the precedent for the board, like you mentioned earlier, they yeah. have to believe in it. Well, you, it makes it really easy for them to believe, so you do a terrific job. One other thing I just thought of is uh, Make-A-Wish doesn't do certain things for kids. Is that true? That is true. That is true. We love Make-A-Wish. We support Make-A-Wish. In fact, we've donated $200,000 total to Make-A-Wish um, in the past couple of years with our partners at Buckeye. And um, But the reality is uh, they don't do... Uh, gun related activities so we started a uh, program under Sky High called Adventures mm -hmm. and um, my love for the outdoors and honestly our donor base's love for the outdoors trickles into certain kids who guess what their dream is to go whitetail deer hunting their dream is to catch their first redfish their dream is to sit in a duck blind in South Louisiana in the pouring rain and shoot that first up, right? Or um, we've now introduced horseback riding trips, right? We have an amazing donor at Y Bar Ranch in Tilden, Texas, the Maffridge family, and we got to take a child, well, Lindsay, she's a teenager, right? Brain tumor, right? Inoperable. Um, and her thing was she wanted to go to a Texas ranch, period. Well, the ranch that's in our hearts is Y Bar, and we got to allow her to feed cows and I'm telling you right now, it made her entire day. We put her in a helicopter and let her see all of South Texas, and then we let her family ride horses. So it's not always about hunting and fishing. We are introducing kids and families into the outdoors, period. They got to learn a lot about a full-blown working cattle ranch, right, which was really neat, as well as camping opportunities um, all over uh, the United States. So our adventures program takes um, anywhere from 15 to 20 kids that are current patients, Texas Children's and St. Jude, um, as well as terminally ill patients that honestly this is the last thing that they want to do with their family, um, and then also survivors who, you know, you know, they did the deed. They went through treatment for three to five years, and you know what? We're going to reward them, and they want to go on that awesome hunting adventure. So, so, yeah, that's really neat. So, kids out there, if you're listening, we're taking applications, and donors, thank you so much for everything you've done for us. Tons of ranches, tons of communities have come together to donate these trips for these kids. That's terrific. And your mission has... If, uh, I guess expanded, you know, to that point beyond, you know, what it was once. Let's raise money for St. Jude's for through these clay shoots. Has obviously you've added additional programming. I mean, at a high level, can you talk about your mission and where it is today? So the mission's simple: it's to provide comfort, which is where um, our tie for Sky High program comes in. So we make blankets and deliver them to the kids that are going through outpatient, inpatient therapy. Um, that is our adventures program. 
right, to take these kids on awesome trips. So uh, the second piece is to fund research. Without the research, we, we can't find the cures, right? We, we can't understand why a 13-year-old leukemia doesn't respond to the same protocol or treatment as the nine-year-old, right? So we have to have the research, and that's where St. Jude Children's Research Hospital really comes in to play, as well as TCH. And so, um, and then lastly, saving lives. And so that's the ultimate goal. And we will do whatever it takes to, to save every single life and to eradicate pediatric cancer. And honestly, I truly believe that in our lifetime, we can do it. If we gather enough people in the community and around the world, we can do it. And so you've got adventures, you've got tie for sky high, we collect pop tabs all year long off the top mm -hmm. of your Coke cans. You know that brings in $35,000 um, a year just to the Ron McDonald House of Memphis alone? Just saving your pop tabs, I know, it's crazy. <laughs> and then of course, our events now are huge. It is combined, you kick off a Friday with a golf tournament, you shower up, get dressed, and you're going to our big Western banquet with a spectacular auction, silent and live, giving you that throw out Taylor Sass. Mm -hmm. um, and it's paired with food and dancing and fun, and it's just electrifying passion in the room. Then the next day, you're going out, you're putting on your old clothes, and you're putting your shotgun together, and you're going to shoot sporting clays and eating some of the most amazing food that you'll ever eat, right? So it's just this big, spectacular experience. Um, and I honestly believe that it's for everyone. You know, it, it, the whole family can come. We have kids' activities, face painting, archery, all this stuff. So we invite the whole family to participate. And I think that also makes us a little unique. And this spectacular food, Laura, I've never been, but I've seen videos. They have all their, many of their sponsors and supporters come out and, and they are literally arranged for them to cook different things and so you can walk around and just enjoy food even if you're not shooting no just yeah go for the food go for the food fried ribs jambalaya shrimp fettuccine mm -hmm. um i mean boar tacos wow <laughs> texas a m came and cooked boar tacos for us i mean the best texas brisket you'll ever have i mean literally we have 15 to 20 cooking rigs in a circle and you just walk around and you grub all day long <laughs> that's amazing so it's you've come a long way since that first uh, a place long way. <laughs> it's incredible and the amount of money you've raised and the amount that you've done for the fight against pediatric cancer and to keep people comfortable who have gone through it or are going through it it really is incredible uh, a couple of things we like to do on the show with all of our guests is uh, what, what are some uh, software or applications you found along the way that's helped you? Okay, so number one is my new one from Jesse, and that's Blinkist. Blinkist, and that is basically cliff notes for the books that you don't have time to read. <laughs> okay. So you can listen or read the cliff notes, which is awesome for me because I'm extremely busy. Second one is Camcord. So as much networking as we all do, I'm old school, I love a business card. You take a picture of the business card, it is in your phone for good. I love it, Camcord. Um, iBooks is huge for me because we have so many attachments flying around every day. And so I want to have every event flyer at my fingertips because I do a lot from my iPhone. So I can pop that out to you today and say, hey, Brian, guess what? You can register for the Steel Strong event in October. So iBooks is huge. And honestly, guys, Instacart. Are you are you using Instacart yet? Because I <laughs> I do not have time to grocery shop, and um, that saves the day for me. In fact, I'll get home tonight and be able to cook uh, a meal for the family. Because guess what? They delivered my groceries today at 10 a.m. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it is honestly the best thing since sliced bread because I'm not fighting the H E B crowd nor the parking lot. <laughs> totally. Yeah. So you know, obviously, my wife works at full time also a business owner yeah. a business owner we got kids running around yeah that, that is saver lifesaver for us it's lifesavers i mean it just helps you know whether it's amazoning your toilet paper for the next six months or you know and you know i still support we still support small businesses but those are my top ones blinkist camcord ibooks instacart and then if you want to get around some traffic download ways ways yeah, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. especially when you drive from humble now yes i live in fall creek mm -hmm. i don't like the drive <laughs> and so the books that you're putting into clip notes do you have any book recommendations for i do so i read the ones that impacted my life at a younger age was uh first cheryl sandberg's book lean in now that's a read that you can do without blinkers but uh, lean in was huge because i was a female in a male dominant industry still am in the oil and gas and so i had to walk into a room and have 
60-year-old men take a 22-year-old seriously about an oil and gas product that I was selling. And so Cheryl basically lays it out on the table and says, no, 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 don't you sit in the back, in the back of the room. Get to the table and lean in. Be confident. And it's okay to switch things in your career. You didn't have to go to Harvard. Like, her book's really good. It's, re it's really good. Um, one of my favorites lately is Women Who Work by Ivanka Trump. And it's amazing because I am struggling with um, the idea of having a baby, right? How in the world am I going to juggle like, a career in oil and gas, running a multi-million dollar nonprofit, maintain my social life because I love my social life, um, and introducing a child. And so Ivanka kind of breaks it down for you and encourages women to go back into the workforce. A lot of women leave the workforce to have their children and never return. And the reality is we have a lot of smart, bad-to-the-bone females out there. Have your child, that's great. Then go back to work. You can do both. And so I've enjoyed her book. And then my personal favorite right now is The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Blank. Okay? Um, it's really good because honestly, yeah, it, it's, it's to the point. It says this. Guess what? Quit worrying about all the small stuff. Don't fuss at your wife for leaving a cereal bowl in the sink, for crying out loud worry about your top five and so i've actually written down my top five and i'm trying to prioritize and keep that focus and keep that on the forefront so that book was pretty um it was pretty harsh but i mean I, I enjoyed it a transformative uh, it's written by manson and, and the transformative part in his life was when one of his friends passed away and yes. of course uh, one of the things i always commend you for is 20 percent. that's a lot of children that you meet families that you meet along your journey that's hard that really is hard and, and some of the stuff that was in that book was probably pretty relatable for you and and then like you said just don't sweat the small stuff this life's too short mm -hmm. yeah, so. yeah it's too short i mean we we um actually just you know got together with some amazing people uh, the spitzers the kleins and um you know uh uh and and honestly it was one of the hardest things we've ever done but we we put together a funeral for a 10 year old little boy named ziggy and so you know when you when you go through these experiences you realize what's the most important thing in life well i was telling some people i was i was looking to get more active with sky high and that one of the concerns that i have is the reality of it and I, you know how am i going to do in those situations and uh, i'm sure i'll be fine but it's something you need to be yeah, it's something you need to prepare prepare for. I mean, look, we shed tears. I mean, we do. It, it happens. Um, but the but the reality is that's our motivation, honestly, and that's what keeps everyone going. That's what keeps our amazing staff on point all the time, working overtime and not getting paid for it, and and going above and beyond. Because the reality is, we're not saving every child yet, and we need to. Well, I like how you said, yeah, because sort of the last part is, and I think I mentioned at the beginning, Brittany's really just getting started. Uh, you can tell that this is, this is only a part of the journey. You're on a mission to eliminate uh, pediatric cancer. So, so what's next? What's in, in the immediate and then maybe longer term? What, what's... So the immediate is we have four major fall events coming up. One with one of our big partners, Crestwood Midstream. We've got an Anadarko golf tournament, our big boy in San Antonio, which is super exciting. And in addition, our Permian Basin event, um, which is sponsored by Anadarko Petroleum as well. And so you've got all of those packed into the fall. And then the big cherry on top, which is super new to us, and a big fat thanks to Brian. But we are um, doing an event with the Still Strong Foundation. So this is our first nonprofit, nonprofit partner event. So it's called Still Strong is Going Sky High. And it's a celebrity athlete um, event at the Post Oak Hotel, October 23rd. It's a Tuesday night. Why on Tuesday? Well, guess what? That's when the Texans are off right and it's their sunday game so no one has an excuse not to show up and we're super excited to partner with such a passionate nonprofit. and i have just fallen in love with what the steel strong foundation does for families in need they pay the bills at the hospital right so st jude's free of charge how amazing but texas children does not so many are not. These families are going in there and they can't pay their electricity bill, much less pay $15 to park when their child's going through chemo. So kids, 
um, or families can apply through their social worker, uh, through the uh, Steel Strong Foundation, and they help that, right? And so Devin Steele and I had breakfast one morning with you, Brian, and we really hit it off. And so um, it's really amazing to find other passionate people, right, um, that believe in this mission. And his daughter is a phenomenal girl, Leah, and she's a survivor, right? She made it through that battle. Um, and so he wants to get back on top of his amazing career that he had in the NFL. I mean, not every celebrity nor athlete or anybody of that stature goes that far to give back. They do sometimes what they have to do. Devin's like, no, I'm starting my own nonprofit. And then guess what? We're partnering. So it's really exciting. October 23rd, get your gala ticket. It's going to be great. It's really exciting that, that, that that's happening. I mean, it's just two uh, such passionate people with a similar cause. It's going to be amazing. And uh, if, if you don't know Devin and his story, I mean, that the SB speech from, uh, from getting the Jimmy Balbano Award says it all. It's a 10-minute clip you can watch online. Uh, but uh, yeah. that, that's really exciting. Yeah. And then he's also got a podcast called Undefeated, which goes through people's struggles in life. And I think he just released a couple of new episodes that yeah. behind on. He's so. getting ready to go on his book tour. I mean, and, he's also, oh, we're yeah. like a whole fan club for Devin. We like and Devin. And I forgot yeah. about the book coming yeah, the book out. Coming so. Out. Love to try to get him on some you gotta get his him on. schedule. Yeah, yeah. And then in the big scheme, hold on, I'm not yes, done yet. Please, please, tell us the okay. big picture. I can't reveal the details, but let's just say that our team has a huge challenge ahead. We are tasked to raise forty-two million dollars in the next fifteen years. Forty-two million in the next fifteen years. I can't give the details yet. January 1st, 2019, we are going to enter a 15-year journey to support St. Jude, Texas Children's, and Ronald McDonald House, and I'll just say, with a total pledge commitment of $42 million. So that's gone up since the last time I talked to you. <laughs> <laughs> the good news is, uh, you want to talk about St. Jude's? Y'all went up there a couple weeks ago, and yeah. you beat the 10-year pledge by a few years, right? Yeah, so what was so neat was we were um, honored to partner with the Eric Trump Foundation, um, now Cure Timothy, and they had entered into a $20 million pledge to build the surgery and ICU center, which didn't exist before they built it, and we were able to partner with them and donate $5 million. So we had 10 years to do it, and I'll never forget the day that I shook Eric's hand, came back to the board and said, hey, guess what, girls? We're going to raise five million bucks. We got 10 years to do it, and everyone wanted to quit. <laughs> They're like, you are crazy, and you did not ask our approval. So, yes, another lesson, Mark. Ask your board's approval to do those kinds of things. But we did it in four and a half. How about that? High five. Awesome. We're done. <laughs> we built um, the surgery uh, ICU center together with amazing partners, and we are done. Five, uh, you know, five million dollars in four and a half years. Oh. My goodness. And now we're going to go to forty-two million, but we got fifteen years. My, my goal is ten years. Everybody out there. <laughs> <laughs> and I think she'll do. I don't think I know. So the uh, completely incredible journey so far. And if you do decide to have children, you'll figure it out. And yeah, you've got such a strong team now. You do actually have an office. You have an executive director. You've got a, a board that's on board with the mission, uh, new partnerships, whether it's Eric Trump or Devin Still. And it's, that's just going to continue for it, Brittany. Uh, so, so such an incredible story. Thank you for joining us. Thank you all. Thank you. So Sorry, much. I talked so much. <laughs> hey, this is a longer than normal. We're like normal. 51 minutes in. I knew there was no way I could do it in 25 minutes. Normally, it's 25 minutes. And the reason we do that is about the average commute, but your commute's about probably 55 minutes. That's it. There you go. <laughs> this is good. Well, uh, honestly, anything that we can do here at the Big Idea Small Business Podcast to help get the word out for your cause, we're here to do it. You are now a big idealist. That's what we call our guests and followers so uh, we are we try to support uh, anybody who comes on the show in any way we can so thank you so much for joining us and thank you all for for listening now go out and close some business yeah, that's thanks, it Brittany. Thank thanks you. Brittany thanks so much Central Texas Rains the strongest drink I found thank you for listening to Big Ideas Small Business Follow us at BISB Media and visit our website at www.bisbmedia.com.